Okay, so one of the key things with a lot of autonomous agents that are built around using large language models is the way that they evaluate themselves. So in this video, I want to look at the concept of what an RCI chain is and also how we can actually build one using the new Langchain expression language. And so you can get a sense of how this all comes together. So where autonomous agents go off the rails a lot is when they're not checked. So you need a f to find a way to check them. And it turns out kind of amazingly that one of the best ways to check them is just to get the language model to look at its own output. Now you can either use another language model, a bigger language model to check a smaller language model, but even with a, a decent sized language model, it can, it has the ability to check its own output and will often see errors. Now, this is to do a lot with the autoregressive nature of the language models, but it is really kind of magical in many ways. So the thing we're going to look at is this idea of an RCI chain. So this comes from this paper called Language Models Can Solve Computer Tasks here. And the idea also comes from another paper, sort of Reflexion. These two papers have a lot of sort of commonalities in them, but the one we're going to be looking at specifically is the RCI paper language models can solve computer tasks. And in that paper, they talk about, okay, what is an, an RCI chain? So RCI stands for recursive criticism and improvement. And the idea is actually pretty simple. They, they show that what you can actually do is you can start off with a zero shot prompt where you basically just ask the language model a question or something. You then take the output of that and you then prompt the model to basically criticize the output, to check the output and to see, okay, is this a good output? Is it not a good output? What needs to be changed and stuff? And then finally, you actually have an improvement prompt, which takes both the original question, the, the output, the criticism, all in one prompt, and then writes a new version of the prompt. So it's supposed to be an improved version of the prompt there. But this is what an RCI chain is. It's basically recursive criticism and improvement. And it can be done, the, the whole recursive thing just means it can be done multiple times. So you can actually take the output and then check it again if you wanted to, or that kind of thing. We're going to focus on three prompts and three chains for this as we approach it. So the first one obviously is going to be our initial question. It doesn't even have to be an initial question. It could be that you get it to write an email with your first prompt. Then the second prompt is going to be an evaluation of the output of that prompt based on the question or the prompt that went in as well. So we have to pass both the output of the initial question and the actual output that the language model generated into the critique prompt with its own prompt as well. We then take the output of that. So where it's basically being critiqued and said, oh, this part is wrong or this part could be improved. And then finally we pass it into the improvement chain where it's going to basically take in all of these things and improve upon them as it goes along. What we actually have is something like this. So if you look at these three steps, you've got like our initial question and the top arrow here would be the output of the model going into the next prompt. But we also need to pass that initial question into the next prompt as well. That's gonna be used as well. Then we get the, the critique out. We're gonna pass that into the improvement prompt, but we also need to pass in the initial question back into the improvement as well. And then finally here, we're taking the output and that's going to be our final output. Now we could actually be recursive and come back from the improvement and feed it back into the critique and do a second critique for this. So we could have multiple steps. You'll find that for simple questions, that's not needed, but sometimes for things like writing longer piece of document or something like that, it can be useful to have it do multiple critiques and multiple improvements as it goes through. And that can be either done by breaking down the document, or it can be done just fitting the whole document in if you've got a long context window, etc. All right, so we need to basically build three chains here. The initial sort of prompt and initial question chain, 
the critique chain, which is going to take the outputs of the initial one in, and then we're going to have the improvement chain. And then finally, we're going to have our output from this. So let's jump into the code and have a look at how we would do this. Okay, so in this notebook, we're going to look at building an RCI chain with a chat model. I'm using OpenAI here, but you could use Claude 2. You could even use Llama 2, 70 billion with the chat set up for doing. So just quickly showing you what I'm bringing in, I'm not bringing in a lot at all. We're using obviously a recent version of Langchain to make sure that we've got the Langchain expression language in there. And the first thing you're going to start off is just go through how we do multi-chains with this. So you can see here, I've got two prompts. I basically set up my model. I've got two prompts and this one is basically tell me an interesting fact about, and then I put in a subject. And then the second prompt is like a reverse of that based on this interesting fact, which is a chunk down from a meta subject, recover what the meta subject is and then tries to predict this. Now you could probably improve this prompt quite a bit if you actually wanted to do something like this. But here I'm, I'm more interested in showing using the two prompts. So with our first prompt, we can make a chain pretty easily. We just have prompt, pipe, model, pipe, and then our output parser. And so if I pass in, okay, tell me an interesting fact about Elvis. It goes off and gives us a nice interesting fact. Elvis Presley was a black belt in karate. And it tells us a bit about that. Now, what we would really love is if we wanted to do the multi-prompt is to just chain this like where we could go prompt, model, output parser, feed that into the reverse prompt, model, and then output parser. Unfortunately, this doesn't work because it turns out that for the second sort of chain part of, or second part of this full chain or second chain itself, we actually need to pass in as a dictionary, not just as a string. So we could actually invoke the first chain with just passing in a string. But after that, we need to pass in a dictionary. So you'll see that if we run this, and I've turned on langchain.debug equals true here, that when we go through it, you, you can see it, it, it works fine for the first chain, but then when it comes to the second chain, we run into an error and it tells us that it must be a mapping, not a string going in there. So that brings the question of how do we do this with a multi-chain? So the way to do it is actually pretty simple. We define our two chains and the input for this chain two is actually just going to be interesting fact, right? Because we use that in the prompt, the F string prompt that we're substituting out is interesting fact. And then we just pass in chain one, the output of chain one is going to be that interesting fact. So we've got our dictionary here with the output of chain one being the interesting fact that gets passed into our reverse prompt, our model, and then our output parser. If you see now, if we invoke chain two, so we actually have to run chain two and pass into what we would pass into chain one. It will first basically make this. And to do that, it has to run chain one. So we can see that it, it's going through running chain one. It then gets the output of chain one, the stuff about Elvis and the black belt in karate. It then passes that into chain two. And it can run chain two, and then it can reverse that. And you can see that it comes back saying that the subject is probably Elvis Presley's interest and proficiency in karate. So it doesn't get back to just Elvis. Now you could possibly change that by playing around with the prompt there. But I wanted to show you, that's how you do a, like a multi-chain, right? Where we're linking chains to chains here. So now we want to move on to the RCI, the actual RCI prompt here. This is going to be a little bit more complicated because now we want to, we're using a chat model. So chat models have system templates and human templates. So here I'm going to basically start off where we're going to create this chat prompt from having a system template, which is going to be, you are a helpful assistant that imparts wisdom and guides people with accurate answers. And then the, the human template is just going to be the question that goes in there. So you can see that if we start off with this, we basically have to combine these, the system prompt and human prompt to make our chat prompt template from messengers, but we can then feed that into our chain, no problem. So you can see here, we can basically pass that into 
chat prompt model a string output parser. And so the question I'm going to use here is one of the ones from the GSM 8K logic questions of, okay, Roger has five tennis balls. He buys two more cans of tennis balls. Each can has three tennis balls. How many tennis balls does he have? So it's basically should be five plus two times three. And so it's going to be 11. Now, the initial answer out here actually gets it. So it, it basically does that calculation and it gets it right here. A lot of the open source models won't get this right. This is one of the simple tests that I, I give a lot of the open source models. So let's pretend that it got it wrong. So I'm actually making a fake initial answer here where we, we're going to say, okay, Roger initially has five tennis balls. Each can has three tennis balls. He bought two cans. But when I put it into the math, I'm just going to make it five plus four equals nine. So it's clearly the wrong answer. So now we've got our critique prompt. So this is the first of our three chains here. We've got our first three chains. So now we come to the second chain where we've got the critique chain. So this also has a system message and has a human message in here. And you can see in the human prompt here, we're passing in the question, we're passing in the initial answer. Now I'm actually going to pass in the fake initial answer for this so we can see if it actually critiques it and works out that it's wrong. Okay, so I've got my, my RC prompt. So this is the critique prompt in here. And this is the one that we could run recursively if we wanted to. Here you can see I'm basically evoking this. And so I've got my initial question and I've got this fake answer. And sure enough, you can see that criticism that comes back is the problem with a given answer is it incorrectly calculates the number of tennis balls Roger has now. The answer has five tennis balls and then adds four. And it's, it basically tells us that, okay, it's got it wrong. And really what it should have done is it should have had two times three, five plus two times three equals 11. Therefore, the correct answer is 11. So now that's our constructive criticism there. So that gets passed into our third prompt. So you can see here, again, we've got a, a system uh, prompt. We've got the human prompt. Now in the human prompt, we're passing in the question, the initial answer, and the constructive criticism here. So you can see when I basically make this, again, this is just a simple chain. When I make this, I've basically got my question, my initial answer, where I was practicing in the fake initial answer. And then I've got the constructive criticism. And this chain is able to then take all those things and rewrite it. Okay, rewrites it. Roger initially has five tennis balls and it goes through and eventually gives us the, the right answer of 11 tennis balls. She gives us what we had at the start there. Now, remember, you don't have to use this for a question. You could use this for writing an email, for doing a whole bunch of different things. The idea is just that you're getting the critique on what the language model did and then a revision of improvement for that. Now we've got three separate chains. So this is okay if we were going to write like some kind of function where we did this, but really we want it in a combined chain. So to put it into a combined chain, We've got our three chains here, and I've actually remade the chains. And we're actually going to need to pass some variables around. So before I was doing it in an open scope, it was easy to pass them around. Now to basically pass them around, I'm going to use this item getter. So when we pass in the question in here, anytime we're going to use the question later on, we need to basically have this item getter question. So that went, that's going to be used for the first chain, but in the second chain and in the third chain, it's going to be the item getter question. Now let's look at how we actually do this. So you can see here, obviously the chain one is going to produce a result out. That's going to become the initial answer for the chain two. That's going to produce a result out, which is going to become the constructive criticism for chain three. If you can think about this, you think about it backwards that, okay, Chain three is going to need both chain one done, but it's also going to need a chain two done. So actually when it does chain two, it already gets chain one done there. And then because we're passing this around, we're using the item getter for the question here uh, that we've got going on. Actually, the other thing I could probably do is actually change this chain one to be the item getter initial answer in here, something uh, I'll experiment around with. But 
by putting it together like this, we've basically got the three chains going on and we can now just invoke the last chain, give it something to do. In this case, I'm saying the question, write an SMS message to say I'm tired. It will basically go and write that. I've turned on the LangChain debugging and just trying it again. Now, you don't have to stick to the prompts that I've used here. So here, for example, it's writing an SMS message. This is a pretty long SMS message, right? What I might want to do is change the critique prompt to say that the answer shouldn't be too long. So then it could be used to actually shorten an answer and just include the key points kind of thing. In this case, though, we're basically uh, running it. It goes through, it writes out, a, so we can see here, we're basically going to get our response out somewhere here, right? Hey, recipient name, just want to let you know. So that's what we've got there. We then basically want to feed that into the critique chain. So we've got the second chain going on and we'll see the output of that chain come back and say, there are no apparent problems with the given answer. It accurately conveys the message of being tired and the need for rest that we've got going on there. And so then the final one basically can just rewrite it. You can play around with these prompts. And this is what a lot of good agents do is they have these sort of recursive prompts that look at outputs and decide, okay, are they meeting a set of criteria? So rather than just looking for one criteria in that critique prompt, you could list out that, okay, is it as concise as possible? Is it as precise as possible? All the different sorts of things that you might want to use if you are building an agent to do a, a specific task, to write something to a human or write an email to a human or something, you might want to check that, is it in a friendly manner? Is it all these things that the critique could do and improve on the original generation? in there. So that's something that where these things really uh, tend to shine for this kind of thing. Anyway, you've seen it finally comes out with the output, which I think is pretty similar to the original one, if not exactly the same to what went in this case. But this is definitely a skill that you should be using if you're building any sort of agents for this. Anyway, if you've got any questions, please put them in the comments below. As always, if you found this useful, I'm actually going to do a whole series about agents. It's something I've been working on coming up. So click and subscribe if you would like to see more videos about that kind of topic. And I will talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.